Hi, this is Christelle Martinet with a very, very different setup tonight. So um, I'm coming to make believe this is live because this is the way it seems to me it's live. Now I'm um, going to start this session for the Lion's Gate, the 8th of August, with a bit of scrying with crystals. That would be reading crystals. And then I'm going to... Um, spread the tarot, but start with first a deck called the Sexual Magic Tarot, and then the Vera Sibila, and finally the uh, New Orleans Voodoo Tarot, so completely different, different um, setup, and we'll crown the reading if I need to with uh, casting the runes. So let me start by um, this is the 8th of October, yeah, October, August, October, I always mess that up. The 8th of August, 8th of August, 2016, Lionsgate. Um, festivities, you know, there's magic, there's festivities, there's colors, there's taste, there's movement, there are a lot of people coming together. This is the moment that you feel people are coming together. But it's not a very warm crowd. Most of the crowds where we go, the museums or the crowds on the streets, even on the streets, you'll feel that there is a little bit of cold. There's, there's a little cold air between people, you know. And um, you may be prompted to want to come forth and, you know, uh, start hugging or kissing someone or moving about and engaging people in conversation. And um, just to warm things up, and uh, you'll find that the conversation is quite different around this time, you know, quite different. The conversation is very, very different. Um, I just came from a dinner where people were talking about um, waste and how which bin this had to go in and the other and what time and of course that, you know, and, and arguing about, no, this should go in that. And I thought, isn't that interesting that around the table where we eat, we talk about waste. This is an evolution, my friends. This is an evolution. There's different talk. Lionsgate, 2016, 8th of August. And um, there's a lot of separation, of course. You know, we do see a lot of separation. There are little particles, there's little groupings, there are little cliques, and there are people who, are, who know themselves and always go, you know, or each other, they know themselves very well, you know. And um, where there are quite a number of people in the crowd that would like to break down what we would call the, the rules of society in order for everyone to feel a little closer. But, you know, there's the structure again. You know, I was, I was crying in the past uh, couple of weeks. And I, I did see a lot of structure. I saw a lot of structure and, and having structure to make you feel freer. And I even said, if this were a political um, discussion, people would tag me right when I remember that specifically. But um, there is the structure, even in the month of August, even during the lion's period, the lion's period, the lion's um, gate period, where you do feel that freedom, complete freedom, because uh, you know uh, where the limits are, the boundaries are up, you know. Okay, I'm going to call it a night with my scrying. Beautiful crystal, this was born as an amethyst and became smoky quartz and then uh, crystal quartz. And, and they, I was told that they come from the same family. They just change um, over the centuries. As I said, the... Um, sexual magic tarot, and I'll change the props just very briefly. Thank you for having patience and for sticking it through, because this is an experiment tonight. Now, now we have the sexual magic tarot that will first give us a message. Now, uh, this is um, sexual magic tarot, but it's an Italian deck, so the writing on all of the the cards will be different. 
and it's um, a deck, an erotic deck by many considered an erotic deck, but the erotic deck that uh, has the perspective of approaching the other, embracing eroticism, you know, embracing sex um, for the healthy side of it, and and it's a playful deck, you know, and I, I there was this uh, new moon on the 2nd of August that had this playful energy, I remember in my readings, and I thought, let me use this tonight, at least as a basis, let's see what it talks about in the, for the Lion's Gate. Wow. Money, 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 money. If I reach da 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 fiddler on the roof, fiddler on the roof. I've got the ace of pentacles, this the two of pentacles, the queen of pentacles is right in the middle. Earth signs. Then I have the four of wands, a very stable card. So you add the pentacles with stability, and we're talking if I was a rich man. Da, 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 da. Okay, and then we have the Ten of Pentacles. Need I say more? Need I say more? You know, my first inkling uh, would be to uh, highlight the Four of Wands in this spread, but um, it is a, a whereas the Ace of Pentacles in this deck specifically talks of um, harmony, it does talk of harmony in oneness. We have this two of pentacles that is quite a um, a seductive card because it's a change. It's sort of a union, you know, you, you, you have to get to the three. So this is the seduction period, you know. The number one card is usually a card that is creation. It has a creative energy. This is a more of a slight movement, a seductive moment. When we get to the, te the queen of pentacles, we have such an odd uh, progression in this deck that the queen is completely removed from, well, the opposite sex, or in this case, the lover. And, and that's our focused card. And it seems that evolution is bringing us a uh, regression. Okay, that's the reading that I'm getting. But right after, lo and behold, we haven't, what I'm doing is something that I don't do all the time. This is a new deck, okay, so I want you to see this. I, I don't read them singularly, but I'm reading the storyline. But what happens is this Four of Wands, and the Four of Wands brings structure. What happens when a Queen of Pentacles has ev evolved so much that she cannot go back? There's this Four of Wands, a very basic instinction, instinctive need, you know, that, that hits. And then we have this Ten of Pentacles, where, the, you know, she's completely objectified. And uh, she has no more value in the Ten as a Ten. She doesn't really, it, it, she doesn't realize herself, the woman at the Ten of Pentacles, that she becomes powerless when she becomes powerful economically. This is what the cards are telling me, and it's a really interesting story here. I'm going to go with the Vida Sibila, and as I said before, the last deck will be the um, New Orleans Voodoo Tarot. Um, I'm going to go to our Queen, our Queen of Pentacles, and see what these cards can tell us. They're, you know, this is a wise combination. I have Consolante Sorpresa. A consoling surprise. I have the Vecchia Signora, the old lady, and the military. You can see that. Now, this is over the Queen of Pentacles. Yes, how money does console a woman who has climbed the ladder of success. When there is change with our old lady, and she is an older lady, and she is a mature is the implied meaning here. How demure she becomes. Not secretive, but silent. How demure she becomes. This is quite interesting. It's such a nice teaching. Um, let's go to our Four of Wands 
going to every time I take these cards out, I would like to separate them. This is a great tonight is a great energy, a beautiful, beautiful, playful energy. It's um it's very pleasant for me as a reader also. It's like a challenge, you know, you feel the challenge of 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 the cards coming to you. And what do we have here? We've got the um Belvedere, you know, future bright future, the viaggio card, the trip. And then we have this last card is La Malato, the ill one, the ill one. And this is over the fourth of four of pentacles, sorry, the four of wands, the stability there. And unfortunately, these cards, not unfortunately, this is the way it is. <laughs> this it is as it is, you know. The four of wands are telling me that the stability in the long run will be, you know, this Belvedere, have faith that will be coming in. There are a lot of changes. There are there is movement. This card speaks to movement, and movement which does not is not for a positive reason. It could be because of an ill one. It could be because of a sad ending to a relationship. But there's a reason why you have to move. That's a little out of your um, power. You know we do make the choices, but it, it's you feel compelled. Okay, you feel compelled. I at this point would like to, even though it's, you know, I had tried to keep short videos because I'm in an area where it's very difficult to upload. It takes forever and ever. So I'm going to have to try to keep it low, this reading, this the minutes. Um, this is over the 10 of, pen, of um, pentacles, but why I'm keeping it low is because of the difficulty in uploading. I keep, I put the scrying in this session instead of having two because it was, it is difficult to, for me to, to, you know, upload things. But those of you who are interested in scrying, who can appreciate the reading of crystals, do um, visit my other YouTube channel. It's called Mystical Scrying Medium Crystal. I'll, I'll put it out probably uh, somewhere on this um, on this video across the bottom, maybe. Um, what I'm seeing with the Vera Sibilla and a very brief plug for my La Vera Sibilla card course, card course, <laughs> cartomancy course. It is a certification course. It has, uh, it's a, you know, been reduced uh, below half percent, you know, half percent, 50 percent. Do go visit on my website, um, www.cristalmartinet.com. La Vera Sibilla course. It's a certification course over this lovely ten of uh, pentacles where the woman loses herself and her development, we have first the virgin. How interesting is that? The female enemy and the mother. There are three versions of the same person who has lost themselves, started out as something virgin. There was much antagonism, and then the enemy came out. The mother was always there, but probably emerged as the biggest, um, you know, like Mother Earth, you know, we have that in the end as a vision over this woman who has lost herself. Now, um, I'd like to come to this first card, the Ace of Pentacles. This, it's the entrance card. And it's a card of oneness. Right, just as a brief um, clarification before I pull the um, voodoo tarot. Oops. The oneness. Well, the oneness is a big price to pay. Have espousing the idea of oneness is an extremely difficult price to pay. First of all, um, the lightness of being, the butterfly, there's an absolute change that has to occur for you to embrace oneness. You have to remove your shackles. Which shackles? The shackles of prison. In order for you to re-emerge your spiritual self, that lightness that you have, that you are, that you acknowledge. And um, this is a constant, this sense of loss, and there are loss on two levels. There's loss. One, 
because of what you're leaving behind, your old self. And two, for many of us, it's that silent, kind of melancholic way of looking at life. You know, people who are growing older or who are feeling older, that's the name of the game, who are feeling older, will have this as a constant. And that's a whole other chapter, you know, what makes you feel old? What is it that makes you feel old? Um, this is something that I can't answer. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just a card reader, you know. This is something that we need to go, because it's a subjective um, sensation. As I talk, I'll mix the New Orleans Tarot. It's a subjective sensation. And if you're able to get in tune to what it is or the, what the parameters are for you, you can play with those and gauge your um, emotions, your feelings, and um, really change the quality of your life and tremendously. Um, let's see what these cards have to add. Mm, 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 mm. Well, well, I have to say, I expected the the decision to come up, the Laplace, a big decision to make. There is, it will be heavy on your mind, it will be prominent in your mind. I have to take a decision. I have to make a decision. I have to take this decision. Laplace, it came out two days ago. Again, there's the focus of Laplace. There's a focus as well on the closed nature of our soul. Let me say that again. There's a closed nature on our soul. We are in some way guarding our soul as if someone were trying to steal it from you. And it's, it, it's kind of humorous for me to see in the cards, of course, and when, when it happens to me, uh, as it happens, of course, it's not that funny at all, you know. It, it's, not, it's not nice to watch your back. It's not nice to feel the fear, and it's not nice to, uh, you know, always be uh, stressed out on, on interpersonal relations. But we have this uh, Santeria um, Oya, which is a three card, and um, it, is, it is mirroring this secretive nature of uh, elite groups and this is politics as it at its worst and uh, in especially especially giving the entrance card was the ace of pentacles um highly spiritual card a highly spiritual card of oneness um and the voodoo tower uh, tower <laughs> voodoo tower are are giving us a warning and, and a watch out, you know, giving us um, the high sign that you need to guard against this secret of nature. You're called upon to make a decision. I'm going to say that three times now. You're called upon to make a decision. You are called. We are called upon to make a decision. We could put it off. We could get high, we could get drunk, we could go out until we fell flat on our face. We could do whatever it takes to remove it from our consciousness. It's there and you have to take a decision. It will come up over and over and over again. If you don't heed that call to make a decision, you'll start feeling it as an illness. Because the only way you can cure your mental and physical state and emotional state if they're all being cured and healed at the same time. Now, I'm going to take the um, the runes, the cast the runes, and see what they have to say. Hmm. Ah, uh, you know, every time this comes out, I'm going to show it to you forever and ever. Gifu, when it comes out, I always say, la, 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 this is a gift. I'm going to get a gift. This is called give and take. They're coming, give and take. We just, you know, this is always such a lovely 
I give you this, you give me that. It's so wonderful. Let's stay together. Let me try this. You try this. You don't like that. Let's try that. You let me try that. You like that? I hate those. Well, all right, I'll try. If you want me to eat that with you, I will. Just don't expect me to down a hundred of them, okay? So you, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. And that's the best part. Now, of course, I have to say, there are matters in the home front there are matters in the home front that are very serious. They're um, compelling. They, if, if they are not as serious, you need to take responsibility for uh, nurturing the home, for taking care of the business, for taking you know food on the table. That is the most compelling. Eight, Lion's Gate, eight, eight. Um, but, but, not only... At the, at the height of the exchange and the give and take, we have the vision of a God amongst abundance. And abundance is ours if we're able to tune in to those abilities that we personally, not we as a collective, we personally have. The give and take, again, the joy in exchange and human exchange you know it, i thank you thank you <laughs> thank you whoever it was that um has allowed me to give you this reading thank you i really needed to hear that tonight ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with me and it, it is always a pleasure wonderful um namaste till we read again bye bye